record. Great. Okay, got it. All right, so uh, first of all, welcome everyone. Uh, I'm glad to see you guys are here and excited about going over the, uh, the upcoming uh, Media Fest. So this is our, uh, our little conference preview. So what we're going to do today is we're just going to give you a little bit of some of the different um, sessions that we think that we have uh, sponsored and some of the sessions that we think will be uh, pertinent to um, freelancers in the upcoming times. That way it'll make it a little easier for you to, uh, to navigate the event. And um, there are some other things that we're going to talk about too. Uh, that our organization is doing in relation to the event. Uh, my name is Solomon Smith. I am Solomon O. Smith, because I, I got to make sure I, I mentioned the O. That's the whole pretentiousness of, of having the O there. So Solomon O. Smith, um, I am uh, the project coordinator, program coordinator for the uh, SBJ Freelance. And uh, again, welcome and thank you for coming. Uh, today, we're going to introduce first, I'm going to introduce you to our SBJ leader, our president, her, her screen name says leader, but she, which is what she is, she's our leader, so she's the one that cracks the whip and gets us to do things um, very well, and she's so efficient, um, so I wanted to introduce uh, Hillary uh, to our, uh, our group, for those of you, it seems like a lot of you may know her, Hillary Niles of Hillary Niles Media the uh, president of our uh, SBJ Freelance. And I'll just pass it over to you, Hillary. Awesome, thank you, Solomon. And thanks everybody for being here. Um, so yeah, I am in my fifth and final year as the chair of the board that runs the SPJ Freelance community. Um, and uh, hint, hint, we will be holding elections, our annual elections coming up um, just after, shortly after the fall conference. Um, so the freelance community is run by a volunteer board of eight members, um, and uh, currently all of the members are on an annual cycle, and so every position is open um, each year. Um, so we have the chair, vice chair, and secretary. Um, we don't we do not currently have a, a treasurer because we don't currently handle any money or charge dues. Um, we also have the um, membership coordinator, uh, Hazel Becker is currently serving in that role right now. Um, programming coordinator, Solomon O. Smith. Um, we also had Ginny McCabe, couldn't be here today. She's our secretary. Um, and I should mention that Stacy Overton Johnson, who is here is our vice chair. Um, so, uh, and then Ruth Toller Carter is our resources coordinator and uh, the fabulous bearer of the color purple in all <laughs> things in life. Um, we also have uh, two at-large positions, one of which is filled right now by Susan Ballot, and she runs our Twitter account and does lots of other things as well. Um, and then we have uh, another at-large position, which is currently open. So quick plug for uh, just sort of introduction about who we are and how this place runs. And, uh, and a quick plug for uh, anybody who might be interested in running for a position. I'd be happy to talk to you about that offline. Um, yeah, so we wanted to, uh, we put a lot of effort into the programming, uh, freelance related programming for the annual convention. And we're excited about what we've got going on this year. Um, in addition to the four sessions that we will tell you all about, um, these are like the official program sessions um, that we proposed and that were accepted. Um, so in addition to the official sessions, we also really have a good time with sort of what I call extracurricular activities. Um, so on um, Thursday afternoon, in the middle of the day during the lunch break, we'll hold a brown bag lunch at the freelance corner. Um, the freelance corner is sort of like the hub for all things freelance um, outside of the sessions for all sort of extracurricular stuff. Um, uh, that we have, it's just a gathering place for freelancers. That's open 24 um, seven. I can tell you about it later, but um, the brown bag lunch is um, Thursday midday at the freelance corner. 
Um, on Friday night, we will have a happy hour um, mm -hmm. location to be determined. Stacy Overton Johnson, our vice chair, is also our uh, social coordinator. Um, and uh, the happy hour is always really a lot of fun to get to Together in person. And then on Saturday morning, we'll hold a little coffee clatch at the freelance corner as well. Um, so just wanted to sort of give you an idea that in addition to the sessions, we do a lot to try to facilitate networking among the freelancers at the conference. And it's really just an amazing generator of energy and ideas and connections that is always a, a blast. Um, so I will go ahead and start with a quick introduction of what we're going to, um, all of us who are producing sessions will describe, give a sort of quick description of the sessions right now. And I'll go ahead and start um, on Friday during the breakout block H at 1.30 PM. Um, we will, we're really excited about this. We'll host a session called Moving Mediums. The subtitle is uh, transitioning from print to broadcast or delving into new beats, but really it could be anything like maybe you want to transition from broadcast into um, into print or uh, from maybe you want to get into data journalism or maybe you want to become a um, like a public radio reporter it doesn't really matter it's just uh, what we want to do is sort of introduce the ideas. Um, that underpin best strategies for how to move from one medium to another, like mid-career. So we did receive some feedback in the past year that people who attend the conference, um, you know, it's always really great to have like the introductory stuff um, for people who are new to freelancing or new to journalism, but we also are trying to be responsive to feedback that we've gotten and requests for programs for mid-career journalists and people who have been freelancing for a while and want to take their freelance business to a new level or uh, just do something different with it. So um, that's where this, that's part of where this is born from. We held an informal session like this in San Antonio a few years ago that was really popular. Um, the presenters, um, our own Stacy Overton Johnson will be presenting um, and able to talk about how to break into um, TV. And then we also um, have uh, Bijan Bain. I'm, I'm gonna put the links um, when I'm not talking, I'm going to put links to people's websites into the chat for you to check out. Um, Bijan is a writer, an essayist and sports journalist, and book author, and documentary filmmaker, and has just like a list of credits that span so many different mediums that I thought he was really um, inspiring uh, for and will bring just like a great depth of uh, and breadth of knowledge to the conversation. Um, we're also um, hopefully going to have someone who will be able to talk about breaking into public radio. Um, Liza Remreika, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing her last name correctly. She's not, uh, her schedule in the end, she's not going to be able to be there in person. So I'm looking into whether we can pipe her in remotely. Um, but she focuses on social justice reporting and uh, recently through a fellowship with a public radio station has been able to transition into public radio. Um, and also we'll talk a little bit about just like starting uh, sort of how to develop into new beats maybe. That's actually something that I'm working on right now. Um, but if you know there is an area of coverage that you've been curious about, but you've been doing like, you know, let's say you've been a state house reporter for 20 years and you want to get into like reporting on food and entertainment, right? Like how do you how do you approach such a seismic shift in how, you know, in your sourcing and building up the background knowledge? Um, so we're gonna talk about moving mediums and breaking into new beats. Um, with that, I will turn it over to Hazel, who can share with you about uh, Freelancing 101. Hi. I don't think any of you probably qualify for Freelancing <laughs> 101, because I think I see people who have been freelancing for a while, but um, maybe you know someone who would benefit from this. We have structured this around three different ways of getting into freelancing. 
Um, we have Clayton Gutsmore talking about um, freelancing while you're still in school and um, after you first graduate without having had um, other full-time journalism jobs before that. Um, then we have Catherine Reynolds Lewis, a DC area freelancer, uh, very well known and um, uh, just a great speaker. She will talk about um, going from full-time work to freelancing and how she did that when she got married and started having kids, maybe 15, no, it has to be longer than that. Anyway, long time ago. Um, and then the third one is Candace Montague. She's another DC area freelancer and she has a totally different route that she took to get to freelancing. Um, she uh, has a master's in, um, I don't know if it's in social justice, but that I believe is the, um, the focus of her freelance practice. And so she came with a lot of expertise there and has taught herself journalism. Um, she's an SPJ member or she I don't know whether it lapsed during the pandemic. A lot of people's memberships lapsed during the pandemic. But anyway, um, she um, she has gone to a lot of training and uh, taught herself and become an award-winning reporter here in Washington, D.C. So those are the three speakers and those are the three ways in that we're going to talk about. And then we're going to ask people um, how they got there and whether anybody else has a different way and take it from there if we have time. That's my spiel. Thanks, and Hazel. Right. Thank you, Hazel. Okay. I think Ruth is next. I do believe I am. Okay. Good. So we are doing this in an oddball kind of reverse logic sequence. The 101 program is on the Friday of the conference and the 201, which is looking at ways to expand an existing freelance business is the day before. So we'll see how that works. Um, <coughs> excuse me. By that time, I should actually have a full voice for the session. The Freelancing 201, it's been a while, how do I expand my freelance business, is going to involve yours truly as the moderator and one of the presenters, based on having been a freelancer for many, many years. I went full-time in 84, but have been writing for pay since high school, and have expanded my business mainly by offering more services than I started out doing. So more than just writing. We also will have, excuse me, Kathy Gambrell, who is DC based and has a fascinating business with all kinds of different services. I don't wanna give away too much of what she can provide for us, but she is somebody who has taken the idea of expanding service into a wide variety of areas, including things online and broadcast oriented and podcasting, training, teaching, et cetera. I'm really looking forward to hearing from her. She's a longtime colleague, but we've never actually met before. So this will be fun for me as well. And then finally, we have Rebecca Aguilar, who is the current president of the SPJ, not of the freelance community, but of the whole organization excuse me. And she is going to bring again a broadcast and a diversity perspective to the session and talk about ways that, again, one can take a freelancing business into new areas. The cool thing about this is that this session dovetails somewhat with our other pro presentation on new beats and new media. So between the two, assuming you can attend both, which we very much hope everyone will, you should be able to leave the event with a lot of tools for a bigger and better freelance business. And I also wanna quickly mention that one of the things we hope people will not be worried about is the idea 
that this is a large event and you might not know anyone when you get there, but one of the benefits of our non program offerings our freelancing kind of social events is that gives you a little bit of a comfort zone to meet each other in person and maybe reduce that sense of oh my god I'm a little teeny tiny part of this huge event we don't know how many people will be there but we think that including these informal offerings will make it a lot more comfortable for many of us hope that helps Thank you, Hazel. Um, so uh, that was Ruth. That was Ruth. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you, Ruth. I was uh, looking. I know right. we both have curly hair, but still. No, I mean the, the, the purple in the background is is a definite identifier. Right. <laughs> I can remember that. So, uh, thank you, Ruth. Uh, next, we're going to uh, move right on to um, our next session, which is going to be with Stacy. So, Stacy. Um, so I'm doing the editor freelancer meet and greet, and I love this session. It is very difficult to set up. Um, it's very difficult to have editors agree to this six months before the conference um, and then stick with it. <laughs> so I have reached out to the editors that I, re I reached out in April, and I just reached out to them again last week. Most of them have responded. Some of them have not. So I have to... Uh, Keep going, but roughly we're going to have um, between seven and 10 editors. There's always going to be one or two who don't show up. Um, I have editors from the Daily Beast, Washington Post, Eater, MCC Group, which does the Weird Traveler, the hotel books that you see in every city, um, Defense News, and there's maybe 13 or so publications with the woman who's coming from Defense News, Edible DC. Um, did I say eater? I'm so I'm a food writer, so I gotta say eater again. Um, Indian Country Today and Quill, SPJ's very own Quill, who pays um, Lou Harry will be there, and he pays freelancers well um, when your story runs in print. Um, there may be another two in there, and there may be one of those who don't show up, but it's going to be roughly that many, somewhere between seven and ten. Um, and all we do is set this up to get them there, which is the hardest part. And really the rest of it's on you. So we're having the editors talk about how, who they are, where they come from, how, or what publication they're from and how to, how to pitch them. So we're going to kind of break up into groups for this one. Um, and you can kind of have some time with each of the editors. Cause it's hard to, if you've got a panel of nine editors. It's hard to get your face in there and meet them. So we're going to make this so that you actually absolutely will be able to sit at a table with these freelance or sorry, with these editors and um, in smaller groups, uh, we're going to have three tables. So we'll split them up that way. And you'll have a few minutes, maybe nine minutes, nine, 10 minutes or so at every table, at each of those tables. You also can stay at the table. You don't have to leave. We're not going to babysit you, um, but we really want you to meet as many editors as you can, bring your resumes, bring your business cards. Um, any friends you have, any colleagues you have that are coming, please make sure that they do the same. Um, I would not bring pitches. The editors will be overwhelmed. Don't do that. Um, you know, but you'll have a chance to ask them all questions. Um, you know, how do I get into the Washington Post? Who do I contact? How do I, how do I, I cover this beat in this city? How do I get in there? Um, some of you, I hope, walk away with, with new gigs. Um, the very first, the very first conference I went to was 2012 in Fort Lauderdale. And I met um, a couple of people there and we didn't have anything like this, but about two weeks after that, I got a, a gig from somebody who remembered what I wrote about and he, someone reached out to him to write, it was a dentist ebook, it was very weird. Um, and, I, and I made, I don't know, a thousand bucks or something doing this. And this was just a random conversation that I happened to have with somebody, gave him my business card and he said, hey, I just got asked to do this. I didn't, I can't do it. I don't do medical. And then they sent it my way. So I hope that not only when you meet these editors um, will you walk away with gigs, but you, I hope you come and talk to me. I find gigs all the time. I find, not for myself, actually, I don't want to work anymore. Uh, I mean, any more than I do. <laughs> Sounded bad. I don't want to work any more than I'm already working. Um, but come and talk to me because I look for jobs all the time. 
Um, I'm, I'm now in the last few weeks, I've taken over putting the jobs out in our weekly newsletter. Um, I do try to look for TV and, and um, print. I actually had one week where I had three photography jobs. I was really proud of that. And Solomon's a photographer. So um, trying, to, trying to cover everybody. I still haven't found any radio gigs to put in there. Maybe I'll do that this week. Um, but I started in broadcast, television production and writing TV. I currently still write a TV show. I, but I did, I've done four years in print as well. And I go, now I do, now I do both. I can, I do both of those actually now. So um, I'm trying not to leave out the TV people, the broadcast people, um, print jobs are much easier, I think to find, but I can dig up some TV jobs for you guys and gals. Thank you. AC, if I may ask a question, um, Will you be getting us the names of the exact individuals beforehand so we can do a little research on who they yeah, are? Actually, actually not beforehand because I can't commit that they're going to show up. Um, I, I mean, they have committed that they're going to show up, but can, I can't, I don't know if they're going to be there. Um, and you might, and we might have more, we might have two who I don't even have on my original list. Um, I forgot to add one of the most important parts of this is when you leave that session, the editor freelancer meet and greet session, we are going to provide you with a link. Actually, I think we're going to have a QR code for you that's going to take you to an Airtable document. And the Airtable document has 450 plus, it grows all the time, publications with the editor's you know, who, who the editor is, who the, who the contact person is at that publication, what kind of stories they're looking for, how to pitch those people and how, who to send the, um, you'll get the contact information for that. It is the most valuable thing I've ever seen in my 23 years of journalism. Um, but we're not gonna give that to you until you come to the session. <laughs> you know, that's fair. And, and I just have to say, this is already so above and beyond what I had hoped for at this awesome. conference. Thank you. Great. And right, well, I will add one thing. So um, Stacy said, we won't give you the link to that air table until, you know, like that's uh, sort of a value add for that we reserve for people who do attend the conference and who attend that session. Um, but there, the, there is a, like a slightly pared back version of that air table um, that I can pop a link into the chat. And this is free and open um, currently and still is an absolutely astoundingly valuable resource. Um, the value add from the version that you'll get access to at the conference is that that version has the contact information. So this version the free version or you know sort of the open version um it ha it still has all of the records the descriptions of you know submission guidelines and what they're looking for and so on and so forth um but it just doesn't have the contact information um so i'm gonna um pop a link to that in the chat in one second and i'll also say that um bye sandy thank you for being here and uh, we look forward to seeing you in DC. Um, I'll also say that for each of the sessions, um, there will be a tip sheet. Uh, generally, uh, some every producer of the session, you know, has the right to and the ability to organize their tip sheet and their resources in whatever way makes the most sense for them in their session. Um, but oftentimes we put them into Google Docs and so they can be updated and um, then you can just, uh, and we usually put those into one single folder so uh, you can access the resources from the conference session after the conference. We also, um, and maybe this, if it's okay, Solomon, I can transition to some of the extracurricular, a little bit more description. Uh, as a matter of fact, since you were mentioning that, one of the things I wanted to mention before we end uh, the session se segment, yeah, that um, there are uh, several segments, obviously, because it's a long weekend, that are going to deal with uh, some things that will affect freelancers. Um, unfortunately, Sandra had to leave, but to put, um, there's a, a someone else that we were hoping would be able to tell us a little bit more about their session. Uh, 
hate to throw you not to throw you out there and Klein, uh, but <laughs> you mentioned this having a session that might have something that would interest uh, freelancers and we'll maybe tell us just a little bit about it in a few minutes. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I was kind of hoping for a chance to to mention it if, if for no other reason, just to ask you guys, you know, if you can come and support me, I'd be so grateful. But the panel I'm going to be on is called Telling the Stories of Vulnerable People, a conversation about trauma-informed journalism. And a couple of us, um, I had proposed it a few years ago, and then this year I heard from Sandy West, and I think Hazel, you maybe Love connect. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think you connected her with me. And she's put together a panel that includes uh, me, and I do newspaper and <clears throat> mag um, reporting. Um, Jordan Benet Begaya, she's editor of Indian Country Today. Nassim Miller, who is a senior health editor with the Journalist Resource. And she just let us know that she also has somebody from the DART Center. Um, so I definitely am gonna talk about uh, freelance, the situations you can get into as a freelance reporter. Um, and I'm gonna share the story of a, a story I covered, um, it was on a murder suicide by a police officer um, he murdered his wife and then killed himself. And in the reporting, I learned that there had been um, what looked like a lot of cover up. There had been a lot of covering up within the police department um, that that officer had been a part of. And the guy that um, told me about it was really scared. He um, he was afraid um, for a whole lot of really valid reasons. So going to talk about how, you know, I had to walk that line as a freelancer between, you know, wanting to tell some of his truths as well, but um, making sure he felt safe, you know, and comfortable. So I think it should be a really interesting and valuable session and um, looking forward to seeing you guys there. Thanks. Well, thank you, Anne, and we appreciate you uh, showing up here and supporting us as well. Uh, I see you have your hand up there, uh, Stacy. You're being very, very patient. Thank you. Um, so, did you want to add something to your your session? Yeah, yeah. Just really quickly, because Anne asked, the I will say that you can see three of the editors who are going to be at the editor freelancer meet and greet. Um, they don't have space to add more than three people. You put the moderator, moderator in and then three more speakers. I cannot add any more than that. So that's why you only see three editors there, but you can at least go into, if you go to MediaFest, sbj.org and go to the MediaFest um, schedule, you'll see three of the people, the editors who will show up. And um, Jordan's actually one of them um, listed there. And you'll have their uh, sort of their little bio there and what they, what their, um, what they publish, uh, but there are a few more. I just can't add them in that document. All right, thank you. Uh, I just also wanted to, uh, so so as we're moving through here, um, before we start our closing, we did want to, there are some other things, some extracurricular activities that I know Hillary was excited to tell you guys about. So there's a few of them. I'm gonna uh, hand that over to Hillary to, to mention some of those that we've tried to work into the schedule and we're working with. To, to make available to freelancers and everyone, any anyone really that's interested in um, in freelancing, whether they're doing it now full time or not. So Hillary, I'm just going to go ahead and pass that over to you. Yeah, sure. So I can just um, share a little bit more about the um, the freelance corner. Um, this is uh, for people who have not attended the conference before. Um, uh, the freelance community, we generally just work with headquarters and the conference planners to find like uh, a little space that we can just sort of take over for the duration of the conference. And it's, um, it's in a different type of place each year It all, you know, it all sort of depends. Um, generally, like a collection of just little cafe tables and chairs, we try to make sure that there are electrical plugs so that you can charge up your laptop or charge up your phone while you're hanging out at the freelance corner. Um, and it's uh, uh, the board members, we do try to um, sort of staff it uh, as we're able um, in between the sessions that we're either attending or presenting. 
Um, but really the Freelance Corner is open for the duration of the conference and it's just a place for freelancers or people who are interested in freelancing to go and just hang out. Maybe you just, you know, sometimes conferences can be overwhelming just with the amount of information that you're like drinking from a fire hose or they can be overwhelming socially, just so many people to meet and interact with. Um, and the Freelance Corner can be sort of a little quiet place where you can just go and find some respite or it can be a place where you go to connect and ask questions and just like find out who are the other freelancers at the conference and what kind of work do they do and how do they drum up business and um, you know what challenges are they going through right now and so forth. Um, so it's really just, uh, it's just, it's just open and we invite people to sort of look at it as their little home away from home at the conference. Um, it's really amazing the connections that have been made there over the years. And um, Stacy the is so good at just like she was saying she loves to like connect people with freelance gigs and with jobs. And I have watched her in action at the, <laughs> at the freelance corner and she's really great at it. Um, and so it's just, you know, we really take um, the community part of our name very, uh, we take that to heart. Um, and the Freelance Corner is an important part, uh, excuse me, I, I should say the Freelance Corner at the conference is really um, an important way that we, um, that we create community uh, by helping freelancers connect with one another. <clears throat> I um, thought Hillary was gonna tell the story of that's how I met it I is just went to a conference by myself in LA. I'd been overseas for a few years, moved back to the United States, was here for a month or two, went to the LA conference, didn't know really anybody that was going to be there. I knew one person. And um, I was wandering around the freelance corner and I'm just looking around and, you know, next thing you know, I'm the vice chair. So they will <laughs> rope you in. <laughs> and they is now me. I will rope you in now. I got to take over that part. So anyway, I, yeah. I met them at the freelance corner and I never left. <laughs> that was I in got, 2017. I got roped in on a virtual. Like Hillary is good at that. She's got lots of. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah, so I, I do just want to emphasize that, like, in addition to the incredibly valuable professional development opportunities that are at the conference and the networking with editors and potential, you know, potential clients, um, a lot of it is about, uh, for us, is about networking with each other as freelancers and finding just new ways to support each other and make like strengthen the web within the freelance community. So we really have a lot of fun. Um, the brown bag lunch is just very casual. You know, there's not, uh, there's not time to make that so much of a formal conversation because it's just um, in between other sessions. And so people might be coming and going depending on when they have the opportunity to grab a bite of, you know, a bite of food for lunch. Um, so it's very much just sort of an open house style thing. Um, but we do hope that you'll come uh, to those, uh, to those opportunities to connect. The first social event is the opening reception. I highly recommend going to that, even if you show up alone and you don't know anybody. Um, it's so many people, it's almost hard to be um, intimidated, right? Because you could just sort of walk around and no one would think it's weird at all. Like you just can walk around, everybody's standing around. Um, but also, but you people know, people usually wear their badges and the badges will say freelance on them. Um, we actually have some pins that maybe the board members at least could wear that say, I am freelance. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of go up to somebody, pretend you're super interested in them just so you can see their badge and see if it says freelance, right? So there'll be several freelancers there, but you can kind of, you know, look at people's badges and see, and then just, I mean, every freelancer I've ever met is more than happy to talk and they're, they might be there alone too, right? So they're happy to have people to talk to. So um, we will all, I think, be at the, I will be at the opening reception. Um, and probably and you've, now, you've now seen all of us in the gallery view. So you know what some of us look like and you can- right be watching for familiar faces. If you see something purple, it's probably me. <laughs> I'll just chime in and add one, uh, one new feature at the Freelance Corner this year will be a message board. 
Um, so I, I wanna give Solomon credit for this idea um, that just came up in our brainstorming um, just you know within the last week or so. Um, but uh, um, I don't know what it's gonna look like yet, uh, but uh, Solomon had the idea to put a message board at the freelance corner so that if you go like, let's say, you know, um, I connected with Diane, but didn't get her, uh, didn't get her card and don't know how to find her. Um, maybe I can just leave a message for her on the message board. If you know, you go to the freelance corner hoping to see somebody, but don't connect with them. Uh, that's just another way that we're trying to create to help freelancers connect with one another. And on that note, I just want to say that that's that is a new idea that we're gonna implement because Solomon had the idea and made the suggestion. And the fact that Solomon is a board member, like he was already involved in that conversation by virtue of his position as a board member, but we invite all of you to be involved in the conversation. And so maybe now we can open it up to questions and ideas. Um, and if you do have ideas, uh, for like what we could do at this conference that would be valuable or helpful to you or at the conference if you have an idea of what we could do at a future conference. Um, we really welcome, we welcome the ideas. Please don't be shy uh, with ideas or with, or with questions, which some of you may have now. So maybe we should stop talking, including me, bye. <laughs> so let's uh let's start by uh, opening it up to some questions about and it, it we about uh, the material presented here today or the SPJ freelance um, community in general. Um, so for some of you uh, are new faces with me, right? So if there's anything that you, you want to uh, ask us questions about, now's the time. Anyone? Or if there's anything in, in particular that is like attracting you to the, you know, that's inspiring you to want to come to the conference or what you're really hoping to get out of it what um i mean that would be valuable for us to know just so that we understand more about the motivations of the people who are going to be there that'll help us anticipate your needs and desires better oh okay uh susanna you're you're uh muted well oh, i just unmuted sorry i was uh, hey. uh so i do have questions and some uh I, I recently started a sub stack and it's a newsletter and I'm in the process of figuring out how to monetize it I've been working a lot with sub stack and I've also been working with SPJ the ethics um the the ethics department has been incredibly helpful in just helping me determine how to monetize it but also how to um keep you know journalistic ethics in sort of in the forefront so that um so that i um so that i maintain the trust of my readers and um and i was um i i love that you have all these broadcast resources and it just sounds like an amazing opportunity and i'm definitely going to go out of my way to try to figure out how to make it work so that i can actually be there um and the air table thing sounds amazing I was just wondering if you have any tracks or anything um, for people who are trying to figure out how to work um, outside of conventional newsrooms to put something like this together. Because I mean, my beat, I, I'm writing about immunocompromised times, um, or, or sorry, the title is immunocompromised times. I'm, I'm writing about a, the immunocompromised community and how they're dealing with COVID risk. And it's just something that doesn't really um, get the kind of um, attention that it needs in a lot of conventional newsrooms. I don't think we have anything in the freelance track that is specifically oriented to that, but it seems to me that you might wanna just go through the whole, it's hard to find because it's a little splintered, but try and go through the whole program offering information at the SPJ website, because it seems to me there's at least one session about working with or getting involved in the alternative press. Oh, And if there isn't, it's probably a little too late to pitch it for this year, but it's certainly something that we should include or try to get them to include in next year's. 
And um, I'm sorry, folks, I'm, I'm about to lose my voice. And I think I'm going to leave you all and go dive into a vat of chicken soup for the rest of the day. All right. Well, that does. I apologize, but I, I don't think I can do much more of this for today. Thank you for You're being here, Ruth. <laughs> uh, the only bad thing is chicken soup doesn't come in purple, but I have everything. <laughs> uh, my wife might be able to make that. <laughs> Susanna, one of the things that you might actually, um, it, it, there may not be a session that directly addresses that, but you may very well find that just by talking to freelancers, not even just freelancers, um, there could be full-time journalists who are have a side gig. You know what I mean? Just by talking to people at the conference, um, you may you may run into some people who are who are doing something like that. You know, um, already. At this point, I don't even know what it is, though. I don't know whether it, it fits into, or I, I don't know wh where it fits. I mean, I'm about to, um, I, I finally got my EIN number. I was um, on hold with the IRS for half a day, <laughs> but I finally uh -huh. got it. Um, and I have my, um, you know, my LLC and all of that set up. Um, I haven't earned anything. I'm not monetized yet. I've just been mostly focusing on, on building readers and I have a really good, um, a very good uh, click, click through rate, I guess, of the articles that end up in mailboxes tend to get and read. I, and I will say, so I've done a lot of medical news and um, I actually work on a TV show that we actually get sponsored, we're sponsored by Cisco and things like that. So I, I've worked a little bit in this, but on things like that, you can have advertisements as long as you're not writing about a drug that like let's say there's a company you know what I mean if you're not if you 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 can't ever write about that if you've got an advertisement for their for journalistic standards you really can't say hey this drug is going to do this you can't write about that you know if people are advertising on your so you want to be careful with that um, but that those kinds of things um, other organizations and and health health news places, um, anything to do with the immunocompromised um, community, uh, drugs. I mean, I'd be happy to, if you go to the conference, I'm happy to talk to you a little bit, a little bit more about that. I would love uh, that. That would be great. Because I just turned down like all these free masks from Project N95. And uh, I, um, I shelled out my own money. And I, I luckily, I'm going to be very well stocked up on all my favorite kinds of N95s and in fall colors. Wow. But um, yeah, I didn't want to mess with it because I do recommend Project N95. And I realized I really do want to be able to let people know, hey, I don't even accept any of their duckbill masks, which they probably offered because they look like duckbills and not everybody wants to wear them, even though they're really easier to breathe in and very good for different fits. Um, so I keep reviewing them. You know, I'm going to be reviewing the window pane masks that will help people who are hard of hearing. And um, I don't want to, again, um, anything that has to do with safety and, and health, I just don't want to even have the idea that there is a perceived bias. Yeah, um, yeah I understand. Well, Suzanne, uh, just to interject there, um, I think that, that that's really interesting. Um, there are several, uh, since you're talking about Substacks, because I, I, I um, just started um, uh, subscribing to several Substacks, mainly they're for helping journalists get jobs, but a lot of them talk about getting started on their own Substack too. So businesses and things like that. I think one place you can look at as a resource that we have is our Facebook page. Are you familiar with our Facebook page? We do. I've been using it, and I also do follow a lot of the the. the there are some sub bleh, sub stacks that help journalists get jobs. Like um, because there's um, Jenny and Wudan have one, and then there's um, uh, there are several people who will just you know post jobs and things like that, and they have different subscriber levels and things like that. Yeah. Um, a lot of them also have resources to help you get your own sub stack started. Oh, well, actually, I recommend going directly to Substack for that because I was working with somebody um, who I, I had hired for a few coaching sessions. And I ended up being really disappointed when I realized if I had just gone directly to Substack, I would have gotten the entire benefit of his coaching. He had done that 
program the previous year. And I think organizations that are nonprofits like SPJ, um, where they basically offer you the same thing to help you become a better business person as a journalist and get opportunities. Um, I think there's a lot to be said for that. And again, for what, what Substack is offering directly is free. You have to apply at the right time and they ask that you have a minimum number of, I think 500 followers. I did not have that, but because they like my publication, they, they were willing to um, let that slide and Awesome. Well, it sounds like it sounds like we've got the seeds of um, another yeah. uh, SPJ program forming yeah. um, because we do. I'll just uh, make sure that everybody here knows. In addition to all of the programming that we do um, at the con at the annual convention, um, thanks to Solomon being on board this year as the program coordinator, we've been provide we've been offering monthly programs. And these are um, these are free to freelance community members, SPJ members, and sometimes to the broader public. Um, and we're always looking for ideas for what would be valuable, uh, whether it's a professional development or just a networking event. But it's, I'm, I've just made a note of this as a oh, possibility, geez. Susanna. So, and maybe this is how I'm going to rope you into volunteering. As, uh, you can be a resource for us as we develop uh, the format for this uh, program idea. Because it, right. like, it sounds like you've got some knowledge that would be valuable to other people too. And Substacks and uh, also um, some uh, different groups on Slack were some of the different programming um, ideas that I wanted to talk about. And your your use of Substack kind of fits into that. So that might be something that we can discuss. You know, because a lot of yeah, glad to talk okay. about it. It's interesting because it's a new community. That's the community of immunocompromised people did exist before the pandemic, but they didn't really um, connect with each other because there was never really any, I don't know, I never saw any particular need to. I just made sure I had all my vaccinations on time and, um, you know, I went on being immunocompromised, but the pandemic really mm -hmm. turned that upside down. Um, so it did become in a very short period of time, a community that wanted to connect. And I found there wasn't enough filtering and there wasn't enough curation with the Facebook support groups. And I didn't, um, I didn't want to be uh, nice to people who were, um, I, I, I mean, I'm, peer-reviewed evidence-based science, that's my thing. Like I'm a member of the Association of Healthcare Journalists. They train us on um, how to look at, um, you know, like Lancet studies and how to analyze them and take them apart and criticize them. So for me, I just didn't have the bandwidth to listen to anti-vaxxers and to deal with a bunch of moderators who were like, well, we have to let everybody say what they feel. Like I didn't want to. And, um, and so for me, you know, I was really relieved that I had all this journalism training and could start my own thing so that I could uh, just. Before, well, thank you for sharing that before we, um, cause we're getting close to the end of the hour here. Uh, oh, before, sure, I'm sorry for using for, up all this time. <laughs> no, uh, I think we all enjoyed hearing about that and you gave us some, a couple of ideas, which actually makes it easier for the rest of us, right? Cause that's what we want. We want ideas from you guys. Um, so I was hoping that we can get everyone to leave their uh, some of their contact information or Twitter information in the in the chat. And then um, what I thought there was someone else that had had there that was trying to speak, but I think he disappeared. Uh, Randy. Like, yeah, I think he was like he was trying to say something and then he had to go. Um, just to just to add for Susanna the you may, even though you're not necessarily new at this, freelancing, I don't know, um, Hillary might know, freelancing 101 or 201 may cover whether or not you need to have an LLC or just be a DBA and your taxes are different and you might not have to pay as much. If it's just you, you might not have, depends on what you cover. Um, I used to be an LLC and then I decided when I moved back to the States, like I do not need to pay anybody to have me set up an LLC and I just, I don't, 
I don't do it at all. I'm just an independent contractor, um, but it might be worth it to talk to Ruth and Hazel. Hazel was here earlier. They know, I know nothing about taxes, so maybe I'm doing it wrong, but Ruth and Hazel are really good to talk to, and they might cover that in one-on-one or two-on-one. I don't know if, Hillary, do you know if that's covered at all? Like forming so an I'm, LLC? I'm not sure um, if it is. I do the LLC thing personally, um, but I'm gonna put a link into the chat to, um, on. I think that it is. I think that yeah. it's probably in one-on-one. Um, and I'm gonna put a link in the chat to our uh, electronic publication called On Your Own. This is a guide to freelance journalism. And there will be information in there about um, business formation options. Because in another option, but this is really only relevant if you're making like mm, six figures or more, bringing in that, you know, like a significant revenue. Another option is to set up an S corporation, which is just, a little, you know, it's it's more clunky, it's more expensive to set up, but there are tax advantages. There can be tax advantages to it. So there are a lot of different ways to, um, yeah, there are different approaches. Yeah, I still haven't figured out if I'll do the 501c3 or the for-profit thing. Um, oh, and I put my links in the in the chat. Uh, it, it, please excuse me if I misspelled immunocompromised times. I was just doing this with my thumbs. But um, on Twitter, it's immunocomp times because I can't fit the extra letter. I'm even thinking of um, rebranding it as something that's relevant to everybody who wants to avoid COVID since not everybody uh, who reads and who benefits from it is immunocompromised. And that, that actually makes a lot of sense. Um, and to broaden that, you could, to keep it going with when and if COVID ever dies down, um, for those of us who are immunocompromised, you know you want to avoid the flu too. <laughs> so, you know, you certainly have places to go with this for sure. So. Definitely. Although that's a longer conversation, but I, um, I uh, a friend in advertising has been helping me out and she's been, um, you know, suggesting titles like I Times because then we could sort of, you know, brand that and that would still be my perspective, like I, as somebody who's right. immunocompromised, but again, it, um, it, it wouldn't seem to prohibit, but I guess it would be another larger thing too, if, yeah. um, I mean, there are gonna be other pandemics, mm -hmm. but I mean, I would love to be run out of business by, um, by, the, by, by COVID being over, that would be awesome. Right. <laughs> I agree. I'm with you. I mean, I don't want to be run out of business, but I do want COVID yeah. to be over. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I would have to, uh, you know, it would be a bummer because I'd be like, oh, I did all this work and now I don't have any readers. But I mean, in the larger picture, it would, it would still be better. Or I'd find something else to write about. Yeah. <laughs> um, so as we're drawing to the end here, wanted to uh we're coming to the end of the hour here um did anyone else have any other questions or anything that they wanted to throw out there before we um i just want to double check the the day of the editor and freelance meet and greet and then the day or the evening of the happy hour the editor meet and greet is saturday at 1 30. Um, that's just going to be a regular session in a regular session room and you've got to bear with us because we're not exactly sure how we're going to like very quickly put the tables and chairs and separate everything if there was a presentation before. So uh, we're going to try to make this as intimate as possible, not just a big room with people standing up front. Um, the happy hour we try to do on the Friday night before that. We don't do it before the meet and greet on purpose. I'm just saying <laughs> it will be the Friday night before. It's actually the only night uh, like Thursday night is the opening reception. Saturday night is the president's banquet. Um, a lot of us go to the president's banquet. I'm actually not going this year because it's my birthday weekend and my husband's coming with me and I can't get him in there. I did buy him a guest ticket to the opening reception. You can bring a guest. If you haven't registered yet, you can bring a guest to the opening reception for 50 bucks. And then you definitely don't have to be alone, right? You got someone there with you. Um, makes it a little bit easier to go talk to people. And the, and the, um, happy hour will not be before the last session ends. As soon as the end of the day, the end of the programs happen. Um, so maybe around six or so. Stacy, can I just verify? Did you just say 
Friday or Saturday at 1 30? Saturday at 1 30. Saturday at 1 30. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, this, I'm going to double check the schedule because the schedule. Don't tell me it's wrong. I've already told everybody. Karen told me Saturday at 1 30. Okay. Um, breakout block L. Oh, I've already, oh, I have checked it. It is block L. Yeah, it's Saturday at 1.30. I checked it when it came out, actually. I, I have way too many things running through my head right now. I have not called the freelance, I or sorry, I haven't called the any bars yet for the freelance happy hour, but it will happen. We have thrown this together in like four minutes before. So we will get it done. I had one when we were in Baltimore, I had the freelance happy hours. Like, we'll just use the hotel bar. It'll be great. And I called them and talked to them. And they, the pictures looked great online. And then it had like the atmosphere of the moon. And I'm like, yikes, this is awful. So then I had to just run around. I just like ran down the street and Comic-Con was in town too. So I was like, I don't want this to be like, weird not that that's weird but you know it is kind of like when you've got so I'm like oh what if they come to this bar so I had to anyway find a place that didn't seem like um a bunch of people dressed in superhero costumes were also going to come to the place anyway we put that one together at very last minute so I'm very hopeful that starting this early I'll be it'll be even better <laughs> so we don't usually have um just so you all know spread the word we don't usually have any we don't usually get any freebies or comp drinks or anything like we don't have a budget the freelance corner doesn't have a budget um but i am going to try to sweep talk my way into one free drink ticket at least for people um for that just we'll see it's a really popular part of dc it's really busy i mean it's a nice really nice area in dc i don't think they're hurting for business so it's going to be harder to get anybody to give us a mm -hmm. drink ticket but you never know so okay, well Using that as our segue, you know, one of our greatest resources in the SBJ freelance community is you. So, you know, we, we, we appreciate you guys coming and showing up for our events, but, you know, and one of the ways that you can help is bring more people, you know, just because someone's not working as a freelancer doesn't mean that the information and the materials that we provide is not going to be useful for them, you know, as part of the SPJ, as part of the SBJ freelance community. So go out and tell people that we're doing good work, or at least tell them that you like some of the stuff we did, or after the convention, tell them you got free drinks. So and come back. We're we're after the convention. I don't know if we'll have something right in in November. We we might, but Solomon has been doing a program something every month. We've had some of uh, like what we're doing right now. This is actually our event for this month was to talk how to best prepare for Media Fest. Um, and what are some of the other things we've done, Solomon? Um, uh, we one done, was a volunteer event, how to get you to volunteer. That might have been self-serving. What was the other one, Solomon? <laughs> those were the two main ones that I was going to try to advertise. We had the <laughs> resume, uh, oh, yeah, the, the resumes resume. for freelancers. Yep. And if you are a member of SPJ Freelance and there's something that you feel like is not being covered that you think you have some information about, contact us, let us know. We get the ideas of what you guys need in service from you, you know, so if you're looking to be able to participate, whatever level of participation that you have to offer is, is what we're looking for, you know, whether it's just suggesting an idea or asking for something to do. And I think that Susanna has given us a really good topic, like maybe for February or some future month where you know, how do you, how do you ethically, legally, mo ethically monetize what you're doing if you're doing something like that, Substack, something like that. Um, I think that we would be like a, two or three a lot of people ones. would be interested in. We have some two or three good ideas from Susanna. I know. <laughs> well, I was actually going to weigh in and give you a fourth. Um, if you're still looking for the venue, there's a website called COVID meetups and um, it's for people who are, uh, want to be COVID safe. And they recently started a section for businesses that are COVID safe. Um, it's pretty small right now. A lot of cities don't have things, but I'll check when I have a chance and see if there happen to be any places in DC. I mean, again, it's the problem is they haven't really expand, like they'll tell you if there's a place where um, 
where people wear masks. Um, they don't really have good listings for outdoor areas. Um, whereas that would be my dream database, I guess. Um, but yeah, I would love to have, I mean, I could ask friends in DC. Um, it's my hometown. So I'll, I'll see if I can just get some suggestions on Facebook if we could. Uh, our, have, our only requirement for that is that it, it absolutely has to be a very short walk from the hotel. So I'm going to be very limited in what I can choose. I'm actually going to start with the hotel's um, bar. But again, I got to see what it looks like. I might, I don't know how often Hazel goes into that area, but I might just say, Hazel, swing by there and see what it looks like. Or Stephanie over she help oh, us. I really need to go find my info. Well, I'll do some of the homework too, but uh -huh. I, I awesome. do what you guys need to do. It would be awesome if there were an outdoor area because it's yeah. it's nice when I can interact with people without masks and eat and drink and things. Yeah, I understand. I understand. And that actually, ho hotels often will have that where you yeah, there's an indoor area and then there's also it just opens up onto a pool area or a bar area, you know an outdoor bar so that might even be a better one um okay. to stick with the hotel. well before we get too uh too too comfortable talking about how we're going to meet up because we're all <laughs> trying to go to this live event finally let's um i'm going to turn it over to hiller so we can wrap this up and finish our uh, official event and then we may leave it open a little bit for people who want to chat or get to know each other right hillary yeah, and actually, I think that I think that does it. Um, I just want to thank everybody for being here and for your interest in the freelance community, for your interest in Media Fest, and um, like I said, like the 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 more feedback that we get from you all, and the more questions that we get from you, the better the whole freelance community is, um, and you know, more of your colleagues can benefit from. Well, I just think we all benefit when we share ideas and questions. Um, so I put the uh, I put the link in the chat. Um, I want to make sure everybody has a chance to see it. Uh, so I just put it in there again. The email address for the freelance community is just spjfreelancecommunity at gmail.com. And that's the best like central place to reach us for any inquiries or ideas. Um, and Let's see, I also put in there a link to the Freelance Community Hub and um, Solomon mentioned our um, Facebook group. And I'm gonna pop a link in here to the SPJ Freelance um, Twitter page, which if you're on Twitter is a really, uh, Twitter account, which if you're on Twitter is a really great account to follow. Um, and uh, yeah, we have lots of we have lots of activities, lots of things that we um, would love help doing. Uh, so in addition to your ideas, if there's any interest in getting involved in a deeper level, feel free to just shoot us an email and talk about what your interests are. We'd love to work with you. So with that, I will um, stop recording and end the official um, I will end the official program here. And then we can stay on for, you know, like another 10 minutes or so if anybody wants to linger and just chit chat some more. But for now, I'll just say thanks and call it a wrap. And for Thank the you. people we haven't heard from, maybe.